Hello, and welcome to another Rebel Coach Conversation. Today, our Rebel Coach Plus is with Adrian Smood. Adrian, welcome to Rebel Coach. Could you give us a little bit of insight about who you are and what lifestyle RE is? REI is? Yes, thank you for having me today. Uh, I am from Plant City, Florida, in between Tampa and Orlando. We're the winter Charvet capital of the world. And my long story short of my real estate career, which is what lifestyle real estate investor is, is I was a really bad tenant, became the landlord, lost the house on a short sale, then became a professional real estate investor, and then found myself in the niche of mobile homes, like single unit mobile homes with the land, a very small little niche that's not new, but no one really seems to know about it. And then I started speaking and teaching because not many people are really doing it on this topic. And I love the bright color yellow. That is 40 years and about a minute and a half. All right. So that is the best elevator pitch that I think I've ever heard. The most concise, detailed, and um, interesting. And it is bright yellow. So anyone who's just listening to the audio, it's uh, Adrian's signature color is this kind of neon yellow. He has, I've known Adrian for a number of years. He has everything trademarked with this color, including the swimwear that he has. Yep. I, bright yellow. Ne I couldn't get full neon yellow Speedo, but I got a pretty bright one. Some of my friends call it uh, construction uh, yellow or safety cone yellow when they like to make fun of me. But you have to go with it. You know, all good. It's good or bad. They're still talking about me and and good spirits, though. Yeah, they always say to differentiate, you got to be memorable. So I think this is this is definitely one strategy. Love it. Yeah, I, that, I think that is the biggest thing. Uh, like when I go and speak, I always have a picture of me and my speedo. You know, and I pause there, and there's some laughing, and there's some boohooing about seeing me in a speedo. But the point of that slide is always, if you like it or not, you remember me from one photo. Cost me less money, less time. One photo has everyone remembering me. Well, I would love to know a little bit more about how Lifestyle REI works. So tell us, you know, when you're speaking with audiences or when you're selling the mobile homes, like what's kind of a first place for us to start to learn more about um, your business? Oh, the Lifestyle REI really started because I love going to educational events. I love networking. So I was going to these uh, real estate investor clubs all the time. They asked me to speak because no one was really doing what I was doing. At least they weren't loud about it. I should say that because there's been a lot of mobile home investors for a long time. They just weren't as loud and they didn't wear bright color shirts. They wore shirts that were stained with paint and didn't talk much. And as I finally got over my fear of speaking, you know, that was a, I literally shook when I was up there the first few times. But once I got over that, I learned I really love sharing and and teaching. So I started teaching exactly what I do. So I buy single unit mobile homes and rent them out. Uh, I actually teach a little bit on the marketing because I love it because I think you have to make marketing fun or you won't continue doing it. And as you've already kind of alluded to, like, that's what I do. It is my personality. I've even had friends say, aren't you, don't you get tired of marketing all the time? No, like I, it's all fun for me. But my original shirt, of my buying brand. So I have a, the buying brand of the business and I have the education is my wife buys mobile homes and it's the same color. So education came second. So I kept the same color and I kept the logo and everything as a t-shirt. And again, memorable. Yes. <laughs> memorable. And, I mean, if we're at a, a meeting in person and there's a hundred people there and they take a picture. You're going to spot me really fast. I have friends that will purposely go stand next to me so they can find themselves in a big picture. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I remember, uh, Marcy, I remember one time our dad told us, if you're ever going to be in a group photo, front and center, just that way you can always find yourself. Yep, it works. And, and it, it helps with the marketing. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I'm there. And then when it's on Facebook or social medias, I can tag myself and people are like, well, what's that yellow thing in the middle? And it tracks them there versus all the other colors that blend. But that's because I like the attention. You know, the introverts, my wife is no, she, I actually, I joke around. She's the only person to get me out of the shirt. And it's really means into a normal color shirt. 
because she doesn't love all the attention it's draining on her i enjoy it Oh, that's, fun. I mean, it really is like the more you understand different personality types, how people, you know, come to the world differently. And so I'd love to do a little bit more. So talk about differentiation and marketing. There are a ton of realtors out there. So I know that's a very crowded space. And now when it comes to mobile homes, can you tell us a little bit about how that process works to sell? Like a little bit, give us a little one-on-one about uh, real estate market and mobile homes, and then we'll go into differentiation there. Okay. So there's really, when people think of mobile homes, they think of one of three things normally. They think of a mobile home park where it has a bunch of units. Uh, there's two main ways that people run mobile home parks. They own all the homes and the dirt. They own a flat apartment complex or they own just the dirt and people pay to park their mobile home there every month. Lot rent, space rent. So that's one way to run it. The big hedge funds got into that years ago. Another way to invest in mobile homes is you own just that unit and you pay someone to park it there every month. You own a big aluminum box, but you don't own any dirt. So you don't have the control. The landowner makes all the rules. And then there's this middle ground that for whatever reason has been forgotten. And that's where I really found my niche. It's a single unit. So I only own one unit and I own the home and the dirt. So think of... Uh, if you live in a neighborhood, like a single family neighborhood, think of that neighborhood, but instead of it being built out of wood on site or concrete on site, they brought a mobile home in. That's a, about the difference of what I do. Now, there's differences of the construction and the mobile homes, a few little things, but as a real estate transaction, it's pretty similar, but because it's just different enough, people are like, "I there's all these myths out there. They're all trailer trash. They depreciate, you know. And they don't want to learn about it, which is create a barrier, which means there's not much competition. And I like to go where there's not much competition because then I don't have to work as much. It's true. It's easier when you own the market. Yeah. So when you have clients, how do you get clients? Like how do you market people to um, know about that you're even around? So then that way you're an option when they're looking to buy real um I mobile. So I, I mainly buy them for myself. There's not that often that I go and uh, sell it to someone else. I uh, You can call me greedy. I just like to buy it and rent it for a really long time. But how do I find it? I wear a shirt that says, my wife buys mobile homes. And I wear it everywhere all the time. That is, today, that is how I get my business. I'm completely referrals today. I used to do marketing, uh, you know, the mailers. I put signs on the side of the road, you know, Facebook ads, Google ads. I've done a little bit of all of that. Uh, but it just didn't fit my personality as much. I like a referral. I like to build genuine relationships. You know, I've done the uh, business meetings. You know, you go every single week. Uh, I've, I've done well at those because I genuinely want to get to know you. And then you know what I do. And then when someone thinks and says, hey, I, I got to sell this mobile home. I just inherited this trailer. You know, well, I know a guy. And that's today how I have all my business is all referrals. That's fantastic. I, it is, first of all, it's, it's so niche that I can see how it open door opens doors as well as creates that barrier where people are afraid. But I want to talk a little bit about the idea of a niche. I, I think so many people say, Oh, I'm in a niche space. I talk about imposter syndrome, but there's a thousand people that talk about imposter syndrome. So finding that real small niche is what is, what has kept you um, apart and makes you stand out at the same time. Yeah, exactly. And so it's, it can be difficult kind of thinking through, I, I have this imagination. I don't know where I learned it. Like this big funnel. Well, first you want everyone and then you want, okay, just people in a posture syndrome. And then maybe you want just women in a posture and posture syndrome. And then maybe you want women from 30 to 40 and then single, like, you know, so it just keeps getting smaller and smaller. And the, Natural way we think is, oh, I don't want just a small little amount of people, but we relate to someone when they're the exact same as us or, you know, so similar. You know, if I say if you're looking for people in that niche and then I say the same thing, they're probably going to relate to you better because you're a woman and, you know, you're closer to all of that. I'm the person next door. I learned like that's my personality. That's why I don't wear a suit. I don't really relate with the big corporate stuff. And I just want to sit there and talk to you and then hopefully solve your problem 
And then hopefully I'm involved in that problem where I make money. I'm not always. But because of that, I found that that's, I, I always just kind of look, all right, well, what's working, what's not. And it fits my personality to be that. And luckily it happened to be a, a niche that there's not many people in. And within this niche, are you geographically staying in that Lakeland area? The Yes, I am. Uh, I frustrate a lot of people that try to bring me uh, leads because I'm a very strict within 30 minutes of Plant City. I create a little diamond graphic to mm -hmm. just send to people because I can build. The, first of all, there's enough. There's enough uh, real estate and mobile homes there. You know, I have friends in Wisconsin. They're like, my neighbors are 30 minutes away. So they have to go further out. Yeah. But because there's enough, then it's just a mindset thing. All right, well, if there's enough uh, people I could possibly help there, well, then I just have to let them all know. And if I have to start driving out of different counties, I already have to learn three counties. Well, if I'm in different states, now I have to learn all these other different rules. And that just spreads me thinner. I have to have different crews to help work on it. And then I can't focus on my marketing more because I'm doing all this other stuff and learning stuff. And honestly, I just don't think I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm not smart enough. It's very difficult for me to do multiple, multiple, multiple things. My success mm -hmm. came when I got more niched down. I used to say I buy houses too, and I still will. And I mean, I'm involved in some self storage, some mobile home, like a few different things, but I don't ever talk about that out loud because I only want you to remember me for mobile homes. Mm -hmm. And if I start saying everything, then you you won't remember me for only mobile homes. And then with these mobile homes, I know you kind of talked through the three categories, but you basically, it within the plant, plant city area, is it right by the strawberry? I always love your um, water tower uh, that has yeah. big strawberry. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So within 30 miles of this big strawberry, but you um, buy, so somebody sees your shirt, and they say, I know one for sale. You buy the dirt and the, um, the home RV, and then you rent that out to people. So you're basically like a landlord for people. Renting exactly. Home. Exactly. It's and really and it's, we're, we're in the affordable housing space for the most part. You know, we do have some that are uh, outside of the affordable housing rent range, but there's a massive demand for that and a lack of it in our country. And I haven't seen very much direction to build more uh, because just simple business, you don't spend much more to put granite than for mica when you're building new. And, you know, that goes with everything at home. So why wouldn't you spend a little bit more to get a lot more money? So we haven't been building as much. And then when the recession uh, came out of it, a lot of people remodeled a lot of, so they brought a lot of quality up. Well, some people just can't afford it. Like you can say that, I mean, this one behind me. So if anyone's watching, we own this and we're renting it out. Now, obviously we had to do some work to it, but we did not make that super pretty because people that there's some people out there that cannot afford something prettier and they would much rather have an ease of the stress of money that they have to pay every month and be in something that's safe and livable, but maybe a little ugly. And people don't always realize that. And we're, we're kind of squeezing that person away. You know, we've had someone that had to move because her husband uh, passed away and she couldn't afford $475 a month because she lost his income. So she went to a roommate situation as a retiree and she's going to have to be for the rest of her life. And, and she worked and had social security. Like there's, a lot of people, anyways, so I, I can get really long winded and passionate on the topic, but so th you can see though that fulfills what I'm doing, not just money. I'm making good money, but then I get a passion piece out of it of helping people. And when also it's like, it again, go to the niche. And so finding the niche that you are passionate about makes the marketing of it fun because you're, you're, you know, I see that, that the heart of yours and the demographic and serving an underserved population and making housing affordable is awesome. And I, I want to do touch real quick because I get people all the time. I'm in a lot of mastermind groups and there's always someone that's like, but I don't know what I'm passionate about. Well, I didn't know I was passionate about this either. <laughs> I just, you know, I got into it and then I slowly just kind of change and move. And I learned, yeah, I really like helping people that don't get a lot of help and don't get a lot of attention. And this happens to be that I would have never said, actually, I would have said, I will never be a mobile home investor. 
I was brought up that they're unsafe boxes. <laughs> Isn't that funny how you how things change? So do you have a team also that helps to do like the property management piece of it or the upkeep of the homes? Is there, or do you outsource that? We outsource a lot of it to the person that lives in the home. So the resident, and so we call them residents instead of tenants. And we really look for someone that's going to be very long-term, that's going to take pride in it, be their home. Even though they're renting it, it's still their home. And we set them up that like, you can live here the rest of your life. Like, don't be scared that we're going to sell it or move, you know, move you in a few years. Cause that's a, in the last few years, that's been a big fear of people. Mm -hmm. And in exchange, they take really good care of it. They don't call us, Oh, there's a light bulb need to be changed. You know, like the simple things and we're there to help them, but that still doesn't do everything. I did focus years ago on setting my business up uh, geographically free so that I can run it from my cell phone. And I didn't realize the full reasoning I was doing. I just like to travel. So I was like, you know, I was doing it for that reason. And now, yes, I am not even in the state that my properties are in. I'm unofficially moved to Denver, Colorado, but I'm still running the business because I had already set it up, you know, through the cloud and uh, different systems. I do have a someone in person there, an office manager, uh, part-time uh, stay at home mom. So that, like that serves me a little bit more. I, I'd much rather pay a stay at home mom that gives her freedom and stuff. So like I get a little bit of a, a emotional, I'll say uh, um, out of that. And then we have some VAs. So we have a small team that's efficient. I don't micromanage anyone. We just, all I care about is the results. And I'm like, if we're making more money, everyone makes more money. You know, I'm, I'm very long-term with that too. That's so fun. I think, yeah, being able to pour your heart into something definitely makes it enjoyable. And then hearing the passion you have for those individuals that are being squeezed by the system right now. And, you know, there's definitely that idea that it's it's complicated. And and hearing your passion about that is, you know, it it is able to just show me that you can become really involved and invested in your own um what what you do for so many different reasons but adrian getting to know the people like you do is definitely one of the biggest benefits and it's i actually enjoy it you know i enjoy talking to people uh, kind of going back to the introvert extrovert thing, you know, that's more draining for my wife if it's long conversations. Uh, and that's the part of the business I enjoy the most is, uh, sitting down with a seller and talking that's for the whole buying side. That's really the only part I truly enjoy doing the paperwork and the closing and babysitting all that. I don't have enjoyment of that anymore, but actually solving your problem more than, Hey, I'll give you this lump sum of cash because it's, not usually the reason you want to sell because it's what do you want to go and do with that cash or your stressor might be that you need to stay two weeks after the closing. So I love this talk. And then that's how you find out the true pain point and then solving that, you know, the uh, investors love to say we buy fast and I can close fast and I have closed really fast, but I would say majority of the people I buy from, they actually want to stay two weeks later because they need my money to close on the next place to get the moving truck and to get moved. So they, they're scared that like, I have to be out the same day that I get the money. Like I can't do that. Mm -hmm. And you never know that solution without getting to know them. Yeah. And also, you know, it's like, there is a level of um, good business is built on trust. Mm -hmm. So then good business should behave on trust, <laughs> you know, and should, well, I like that should, wording. Yeah. yeah. It, so it's, it's great to see you do that. But, and then if we have somebody that's um, listening to this and they're like, wow, I'm really curious about this market. What advice would you have for them to get started? I know you do a lot of education around it and things like that, but what, what kind of advice do you have for those investors that may not want to jump into real estate because it's too expensive right now, but they hear you and they're like, well, I'm not, you know, in that area of like plant city where I'd be competing with them. So maybe I should look into this. What, what would you say to get started? Um, well, even though... Prices are high. I'm putting air quotes on there. Um, 
a lot of us, oh, I put confetti Ooh. somehow. Uh, <laughs> How'd you do that? <laughs> I don't know. Um, confetti. A lot of us have been saying that for six, seven years. You mm. know, a, a piece of my story, I, I skipped that. One way I got into mobile homes is I thought we were at the top of the market like seven, eight years ago. So I've been incredibly wrong. But that's how I found this little niche because I got too scared to buy another single family house because I had a short sale in my past and I didn't want to be wrong again. Well, that helped me find this niche. And yeah, maybe today's the top and we won't know that for maybe six months a year. But if you do the numbers right and you learn how to do it, you will buy it that will still work if we go into a recession. You know, I buy, I'll give you a quick example because I'm very conservative. Uh, even though I buy the ugly mobile home behind me, but I buy it on numbers. One we just bought, uh, I ran my numbers that we're going to rent it for $1,500 a month. We just put it for rent yesterday at $1,850 a month. That is a massive difference. And we're getting a lot of demand. I think the rent will rent at $1,850. But in the next few years, if we really go into recession, I might have to bring it down because at 1850, that's above the affordable housing space where it's at. And in order to for the person about to stay or the next person to come in, I might have to lower my rents. And if I'm going to lose money by doing that, my business is going to blow up and I'm going to lose it. But if I can go all the way down to 1500 and still make money, well, then now the, I can help the person there, maybe temporarily low it, but I can still make money. And I'm not going to lose it. And then, you know, the people that work for me don't aren't at risk and I can still eat. So I guess the, the quicker action item that maybe you're getting at is, yeah, I do have courses on it. I, I have a book on it. Take some of it, if it's from me or whoever else, and start taking action from it. There's some marketing stuff that we've talked about today that someone can take it and implement one little thing. It doesn't have to be a Speedo or a bright yellow shirt. It can be one tiny thing and do that every single time you listen to the podcasts or anything you do and put it to work instead of just wait and wait and wait. Um, and I, I, I'm a recovering procrastinator and perfectionist as well. Well, I always love the expression. Don't let the start stop you. Mm, so I like that. I need to taking write a little that. action here and there is great. So Adrian, if somebody doesn't see on the screen, your how to find you through your QR code and um, website. Can you just share our listeners um, the best way to get in touch with you or to learn more about your your business? You can go to lifestyle-rei.com and there's my uh, social medias are on there. My book, everything is on there and uh, you, can, you can't call me because I don't like my phone to ring. It's been on Do Not Serve for years, but you, <laughs> can, uh, <laughs> uh, you can send me messages and uh, I'll help you out as I can. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much. It's so great to meet you and um, congratulations on your move to Denver. And I'm excited to um, learn more about your work and, and get your book and everything. So thanks again for joining us on behalf of my sister, Allison Nissen and I, this has been another Rebel Coach Conversation. Thank you for having me. Rebel Coach is a collaborative platform that builds leadership programs for entrepreneurs, coaches, executives, and authors. For more information, visit us at revelcoach.com and follow us on LinkedIn to never miss an update.